And hello again, everyone, and welcome back to The Longest Journey. Now, if you remember last time, April is on the island of Elias, and she had to figure out how to use an ancient communication system to awaken the giant Quarum, who was then got back to his fishing grounds, and he let her borrow her, his fishing line so that she could help the stick men build their lunar cannon, which she used to fire a rope over to the previously inaccessible pathway so she could get to the Elation village. And yes, that is every bit as nonsensical as it sounds, but we did that now. And April is on the pathway outside the Elation village and ready to continue with the longest journey. And here we are outside the village. And let's see if the guard will help. There's a slight updraft here. The wind is channeled through that chasm down there and blown out and up here. I'm sure that's not important in any way. Can you help me across? You are human, and we don't allow human strangers into our village. If you wish to trade, let us know where your ship is anchored and we will send traders to you with our merchandise. I don't have a ship, and I didn't come here to trade. I came to talk to your leaders. I'm sorry, but we don't allow strangers into our village. Okay. What's up this road? The Alation village of Tamar. All right, we're not going to get anywhere talking Thank to this you. guy. Yes, but you must leave now. Now, we have an updraft. April was very insistent on pointing this out to us. Well, let's see if we can make that updraft stronger. Because remember, we have a wind potion. That's the last of it, unfortunately. So I guess that's all we ever are going to need the wind potion for. And the reason we did that is because we can now use our light as a leaf potion on April. Oh god, I think I'm going to throw up. That was so not appetizing. Weirdest thing, though. I do feel lighter. Like I lost 90 pounds. I can't even imagine what people would pay for this stuff back home. Ah! Human, you flew across the chasm. You don't have wings, but still, you fly like the elation. Believe me, I'm as shocked as you are. Are you the Windbringer? What's the Windbringer? It's a prophecy amongst my people. Of course, there's no escaping the prophecies. It's said that someone not of the elation shall come among us to float on the wind like an elation, to learn our stories. To bring the wind back to us, and to bring us into a new and happier age. Is that all? You know, I'm starting to forget how simple my life used to be. Family, friends, grades, boys, no prophecies, nobody looking to me for salvation. I don't understand, Windbringer. You should speak with our teller up in the city. She'll be wanting to see you, I'm sure. We've waited for the Windbringer for a very long time. The teller? Thanks. No, Windbringer. Thank you. Well, that guy sure changed his attitude fast. Um, and I noticed the symmetry here. The Merum thinks she's the water stiller, and of course the Elation thinks she's the Windbringer. Obviously there's... yeah, it's prophecy. Let's talk to this guy. Hello. Good day, stranger. What would you hear among the Elation? I need to speak with the Teller. The teller? Uh, go down into the city and you will see the castle. The teller, she keeps to the tower. She's old and her eyes don't take well to the sun. Okay, he said to go down into the city, but the way to the city is up. I'm sure that made sense at one point or another. Okay. 
Okay, there's a couple of people here. Castle Watch, this little child. There's also somebody off to the right. We'll talk to them in a minute. Let's start by talking to the kid. Hi there. What you doing? Playing. Yeah? What are you playing? Nothing. My daddy's in the Castle Watch. He's allowed to sharpen his claws. Really? My daddy owns a farm. Yeah? Do you have animals there? Sure. He has some cows and some horses what? and... What's cows and horses? Well, cows are big, brown, fat animals with four legs and white spots. And they go moo a lot. <laughs> and horses? Horses are fun to be around. They run really fast and they can jump over tall fences. And they look beautiful and graceful. But the best thing about horses is that you can ride them. I can run fast, too. But I can't fly yet. My wings aren't fully formed. But when I grow up, I'll fly far away and see everything. I'll go see your horses. That would be nice. My name's April. What's yours? Saina. Will you be my friend, April? Of course, Saina. As long as you promise to be my friend. I promise. April's having, making friends with everybody, isn't she? And given that Stark and Arcadia split apart uh, around 10,000 years ago, I think it was, uh, they should have had horses and cows on both sides, unless horses and cows can only exist in non-magical worlds, which makes no sense whatsoever. But whatever. Do you know where the tower lives? Over there in the castle tower. My daddy's watching the entrance so that only nice people can get in. Do you think he'll let me in? I don't know if you're nice, but you have to ask my daddy. I'm assuming her daddy is this guy up here. So. Where are the other children in your village? Oh, they're in school now. And why aren't you in school? Because I'm ahead of everyone else. I'm really smart, you know. I'm the only youngling to have learned the first tale this soon. So some days, I get to do what I want. It's a little boring, though. I wish I was in school. At least there I could sing and play and jump around with all the other children. Anyway, um, and is it just me or does that voice actor sound like they're inhaling helium before they read their lines? Have fun, Saina. Are you leaving? Yes, I'm sorry, but there are some things I have to do. Grown-ups are always too busy. All right. Um, we could go talk to her father up here, but we're going to go over here first. Because we're going to talk to this person. We need to make friends with all these people. Be careful, don't come too close. I'm almost done with this pot. Sorry. Are you here to buy pottery? I didn't think traders were allowed up here. No, I came to speak with your teller. Really? I didn't know the teller spoke with anyone from the outside. You must be a very special girl. Supposedly. My name's April, by the way. Nima is my name. Nima of Taama. The only Alation village on Alace. I like your pottery. It's our craft. That and storytelling. But storytelling can't buy merchandise or food. I know a lot of people who live by telling stories, although I guess that's kind of different. They are lucky then. Not that I don't enjoy making pottery. It's good to feel the wet clay between my claws, to shape it into whatever I wish. It's almost like creating a new life. I think. I don't have a husband yet, so I haven't tried. Have you? Do you have a husband and children? Neither, thank God. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I was 18 turnings this spring. I'm ready for a husband, but I've yet to court anyone who could make me soar on the winds. I think the men of Tom are dull and timid. What about the guard on the road below the village? He's our age, isn't he? Isom? He's quite pretty. And his wings are big, but I don't think he likes me. He never looks at me or talks to me. That doesn't mean anything. He could just be shy. Maybe you could talk to him, find out who he likes. But don't say I sent you. Sure, I can do that. Thank you, April. Thank you, Nima. You're welcome, April. Okay, she likes Isom because his wings are big. And we know what that means, don't we, ladies? I'm sorry, I had to go there. But, um, okay. 
I do have one question here. There is this one thing right here. If you remember when we looked at the Alation village down below in the hole? It's a nest. They don't all seem to live in nests, though. There are quite a few inhabited buildings in this village. Yeah, so do they live in nests or do they live in stone buildings like this? Who knows? Let's go talk to the castle watch now. Is there a way to take that little the steps a little faster, April? Halt! Who would visit the teller? My name's April. And what would you with the teller, human? I'm not sure, but I need to speak with somebody in charge. The teller is our teacher and our mother. But she will not speak with foreigners who walk into our city. And how, pray tell, did you get here? The road is closed and guarded. It's got to be my female charm. It will not work on me, human. Please, leave our village and return to your ship. Well, that's obviously not working, so... Halt! Who would visit the teller? We've already been through that. Um, let's try another tack. I'm the Windbringer. The Windbringer? You are not the Windbringer. Are you? How else would I have been able to get up here? I am the Windbringer. If so, you must prove that you are of the Elation. There are four tales from the four corners of the world that you must know by heart. They are the tale of winds, the tale of stars, the tale of sea, and the tale of homecoming. I will ask you one question from each tale, and you must answer each correctly, or you cannot be the Windbringer. Are you ready? Um, let's take some time to go put some crib sheets together, shall we? No, give me some time to prepare. Then return when you are ready, and I will test your knowledge of the four tales. Alright, um, we already know that Sayina here, the, um, child, she mentioned that she has learned the first tale. So, oops, maybe she can tell us what the tale is. Hi, Saina. Hi, April. Okay, now here's the thing. We will be getting the four tales. We will hear these people tell them to us. Remember, the book we looked up way back in the library said that the Elations are the people who do tell tales. They're long. Now, they're not bad. They're interesting from a world-building point of view and from a story point of view, but they're long. So I'm going to just start them off and then skip through them and give you the quick summary at the end. So let's start here. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Yes, my mommy taught me the tale of the stars. It's a really pretty story. You want me to tell it? Please, Saina, I would like that very much. Okay. This is my tale, the tale of stars, and I tell it to you in my own words. As it was told to me by my teacher, in her this words. This was my tale, the tale of stars, and I told it in my own words as my teacher did to me. That was a beautiful tale, Saina. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to summarize Saina's tale for you. Uh, she told the story of a young Alation named Mona, who was always curious and getting into the way of the adults of her village. She didn't want to hang out with the other kids. She wanted to see what the adults were up to. And the adults got mad at her always being underfoot and told her to get out of the way. So she went off into the forest and saw a rabbit, what they called a fluff tail, and um, chased after it. But the rabbit got away and she was lost in the forest. And she was there, the night came, and she heard wolves howling and that sort of thing. Then she looks up and sees the spirits of the five tellers looking down upon her. And they agree to guide her back home as long as she made this story, the tale of the stars, her story. And she was supposed to warn everyone about letting their curiosity get the better of them 
and to let them know that these spirits, the tellers, are always watching. So that's the tale of the stars. Bye-bye, Saina. You're leaving again? I wish you could stay. Me too, Saina. Believe me. All right. Um, we have to talk to everybody, so... And we're going to come back here later, so... Let's head back down the path. Now, you notice that we've met four people besides the guard here. We have four stories we have to tell. You want to bet that each one of them tells us their own story? Let's talk to this guy. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of sea, human. Would you mind telling it to me? I would be happy to do so. This is the tale of sea, told in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in his words, and to him by sea. his teacher in... All right, let me summarize that one real quick. He told the story of a of a great warrior who, this was back when they were in war with the um, Merum, named Aquas. And Achalas, or Aquas, was very cocky and arrogant. And so his teller decided to give him a test. He gave him this sacred jewel that he was to fly across the sea to another Alatian town. And he said, of course, I can do this because I'm the greatest. So he goes flying off. And along the way, he sees some merum in the water near the surface. And he goes, well, I'm going to prove how good I am, and I'm going to capture some of these merum. So he flies down and finds out that it was a trap. The merum attack him, and he, um, he manages to get away, but he drops the jewel. And he realizes that, oh no, I've failed my mission, I can't go back. So he goes off to this island and hides in shame. Well, a year or so pass, and some human traders come to the island, and they tell him of a creature called an Octawu that has, is this great multi-limbed monster that has a third eye that is a jewel, and he attracts sailors to their death with it. And he realizes that, oh, this must be the jewel I dropped. I can um, redeem myself. So he flies out makes himself a spear and flies out and swims down into the water, even though he's outside of his element there, and he finds the Octawu. But he can't fight it, and he decides he can trick it. He lures it into a narrow chasm where it gets trapped and steals the jewel off of its forehead and then gets back to the surface and flies away. And he goes back to his homeland and tells the person that, I failed, but here I am and here's the jewel back, and his teller tells him that, Yes, you were lost, but now you realize that a strong claws and beak and teeth are not enough. You have must have wisdom as well. And now you understand your limits. So that was basically his tale. Let's go in and talk to the guy by the the guard down by the chasm. So let's ask him the tale. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of winds, Windbringer. Do you wish to hear it? Very much. Then I shall tell it. This is the tale of winds, my tale, and I pledge to tell it in my own words, as told in turn that by my teacher. Was the tale of winds, my tale, and I told it in my own words, as told to me in turn by my teacher. All right. His was actually a fairly short tale. He told the tale of a woman named Luana, whose desire was to fly higher and further than any other relation. And she actually learned how to do this. She was considered far and wide to be the best flyer they had. But it was still not enough for her. She wanted to fly at higher than any relation had ever flown. So she went to the top of Mount Bakta'ana, the Tower of Light, which is apparently the tallest mountain on Stark, and was going to fly from there. And everybody said, no, not to do this, because the air is too thin and the winds are too treacherous. But she determined to do it anyway. And they watched her do this, and she went to the top of the mountain, where she could see to the edges of the world, it says. 
and she flew, and for a brief time she did fly higher and faster than any elation had ever flown before, but then the treacherous winds caught her and she fell to her death. And it was all due to her vanity, they say, and this is to basically a warning tale to know your limits and not let yourself get carried away. And But we have one more thing to talk to this guard about. So, Isam, that's your name, isn't it? Yes, Isam of Tamar. A good-looking guy like you must get a lot of attention from the girls, right? Are you asking me for courtship? Me? No. Wings don't do anything for me. No, I was just thinking, maybe you had your eye out for somebody special? I'm without a mate. The women of Tamar are cold and unfriendly, and whenever I try to talk to one of them, she ignores me. Huh. Even Nima? Nima? No, she's too pretty for me. She won't appreciate my attention. This is like high school. Trust me, Isam. You go talk to her one of these days, and I'm sure you'll find you have a lot in common. Just be yourself, okay? You think so? Perhaps you are right. I will do as you say, Windbringer. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Yeah, it's those big wings, isn't it? Okay, we've got one last person to talk to, and that is Nima, of course. So let's talk to her and see what her tale is. Hi, Nima. Hi, Epo. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? I had to learn the tale of homecoming. It took a long time, but I think I got it now. I'm better with pottery than I am with the tales, unfortunately. Do you want to hear it? Please. Very well. This is the tale of homecoming, my tale, and I shall tell it in my own words, as told to me by my teacher, in her words, and by her teacher in turn. This was the tale of Moran homecoming. Was my tale, and I told it in my own words, as told to me by my teacher, and as I will tell it to my student when the time comes. Bye, Nima. Goodbye, April. Okay, let me do the quick summary here. Basically, this is the tale of homecoming. It tells the story of an Alation male named Moran, and the Alation woman he was betrothed to named Ania. Um, Ania was, they were betrothed, and she was in love with him, but he always had excuses to not marry her. And she was a pottery maker, sort of like, um, sorry, sort of like her here. And um, she had also been asked by the teller to be her apprentice, so she would be the next teller at that village. But uh, Anand didn't want to because she was the... Um, Excuse me. She didn't want to because she wanted to marry Moran. So, time goes by and Moran keeps finding a reason not to marry her. And then he goes off on a pilgrimage. And apparently when the Alations go on their pilgrimages, even if they're betrothed or married to someone else, they're allowed to break that bond while they're on their pilgrimage. And they just renew it when they come back. So he leaves. He asks her to wait for him and he leaves. And so she takes off, he takes off and flies around for years, and then finally after many years he decides that Anna really did love him and he really did love her, so he comes back, but he can't find her. And it turns out that after years she agreed to become the teller, and the teller's apprentice, and she is now the teller for the village. And he's unhappy about this because the teller cannot be married. She cannot have children, so, you know, basically... It's part of their oath. So he comes to her and says, Why did you abandon what I told you? Or I said I would come back for you. Why did you not wait for me? And she reaches under, uh, she reaches back and pulls out a broken pot and gives it to him and says, I had made this pot to be my wedding gift to you when you returned, but when you never came back, the pot was neglected and it broke, just like a heart that is neglected will break. You know, this absence makes a heart break. 
And so then Moran's heart breaks because he realizes that he will never have her. And anyway, that's the tale of the homecoming. Um, I notice we can't tell Mina here that we um, talked to Isom on her behalf. Doesn't give us that option. And I think it's the same voice actress who plays, plays Emma, so because they sound a lot alike. But anyway, let's go up here and tell the guard that we have now know all four tales and see how that works. Halt! Who would visit the teller? Are you ready for the questions now? Uh, yeah. I think that's Charlie's voice actor, too. I think we're reusing a lot of voice actors in this scene. Yes, ask me the questions. In the Tale of Winds, which mountain did Iwana fall from in her vain attempt to fly higher and further than anyone else? Okay, I'll point out that you can actually kind of choose this one by looking for the obvious answer in the choice. But if you have not listened to the person, go and talk to the person about their tale and heard the tale, it won't even appear in this list. So. Mount Bakhtaana, the Tower of Light. That is correct. In the Tale of Stars, what did Mona see in the sky that helped her find her way home? And remember, that was the Spirits of the Five Tellers. The Spirits of Five Tellers. That is correct. In the Tale of Sea, what creature did the Lost One battle in his quest to recover the Sacred Jewel? The Octavo. The Octavo? That is correct. My final question to you is this. In the Tale of Homecoming, what was given to Moran by his teller when he returned from his pilgrimage? And I gotta give him the Moran. Yeah. A broken pot to teach him that absence may break a heart in two. You have correctly answered all my questions and so have proven your knowledge of the four tales. You are the Windbringer. The teller would see you presently. You know, they have awfully low thresholds for um, fulfilling prophecies over here in Stark, but we won't go into that. Come closer, human. Closer. I cannot see your face. Closer still. Come sit here by me. There you are. <laughs> you see, my eyes are not what they used to be. Ages ago, I could spot a ladybug crawling up a straw of grass from 15 tree lengths up. Now, I have a hard time seeing my supper. But my ears, balance be praised, my ears, they are as good as ever. I could hear you outside, learning the tales my children tell. You are a good listener and a fast learner. They were interesting stories and your people told them well. That is what we do. The Elation are the keepers of the tales, and I am their teller, the one who must know all the tales told since the day we came to this world. How can you do that? How can you remember every story ever told? The secret is to tell them often and to tell them in your own words, not the words of your ancestors. Doesn't that mean that the stories change with every generation? Yes, as all tales must. Change is important. Otherwise, the tales will have no meaning to us. They will just be words. And we do not care about the words. We care about what the words tell us. Okay, I want to make a side comment here. If you remember way back in the very first episode where we kicked off the game, the framing device that we are in here, there is are two people in a hut with an old woman and they are asking them to tell her a, tell them a tale of the balance and the game we are playing is the story she is telling them the woman sounds exactly like the teller here it's again it's the same voice actress you know I've been joking about that but in this case it's actually a perfect parallel we are playing the story that is being told to us by the old woman 
and I will admit that I have forgotten her name as I'm saying this. And um, since we're playing it, we're not playing it exact, you know, you and I will not play this game exactly the same. You know, none of us will play a game exactly the same. So we are all telling the tale in our own words. I just thought that was a really little neat observation here. But... How long have your people been telling stories? Since the beginning, human. Since we came to this world a long, long time ago. You're not from Earth? From Arcadia? Not according to our tales. We came on a great wind before the divide, when the Earth was one and humans had yet to learn of magic and science. But we were a different people then, and the tales we tell from that time are vague and incomplete. Like myths and legends, the younger relation pay little attention to these tales. Sometimes I worry they will be lost with me, these tales, and I am getting old, very old. I came to you to find answers to some important questions. Ask, and I will try my best to answer. Have you heard of an ancient god or dragon that lives beneath the sea? Once, long ago, when my people lived in harmony with the Merim, there were stories of an old god worshipped by the Merim who resided deep in the darkest depths of the ocean. According to legend, the old god had once brought the Merim into their realm, into the ocean, and he was now sleeping, resting, before the journey back. Back where? to a great ocean amongst the stars. When the time came, he would gather the Merim and bring them home with him, back to their world, to their ocean. Strangely enough, we have a similar tale. It is said that the great wind that brought us here will someday return to bring us back to a place where we can soar forever on warm winds. Like heaven. In a way, perhaps, but without the need for any of us to die. The great wind will just sweep us up and carry us away. Every evening before I go to sleep, I recite this tale to myself. It is a comforting one. What do you know about the dry kin? The kin are numbered four, or so our tales tell. Two in this world, two in the other. The mirror world, the white and the blue, the red and the green. Do you know where they are? No, the tales never say. The kin are elusive. They keep to themselves. I have never seen one myself, and I doubt any of my kind has. The tales do say that our past and our future are tied to the fate of the kin, but how I would not pretend to know. This is one tale that has yet to be told. Do you know anything about the Guardian's realm? This is human business. Would you not know more than I? Your people are the keepers of the tales. You remember more than humankind has forgotten. Please, I need to hear what you know. That is very little. The Guardian's realm is home to the Guardian in his tower. No one is permitted within except the Guardian who was, the Guardian who is, and the Guardian who will be. And of course, the Dryak kin, who were instrumental in its making. Have you ever heard of the existence of a hidden entrance to his realm? Oh, yes. Yes, I have heard tell of such a thing, though I would not know where it is. I gather that one of the kin may be able to tell you. Thank you. I don't have any more questions. I am glad I could help you with some answers. I'm the Windbringer. I know you are. <laughs> it's strange to me to hear those words spoken. I did not think they would be in my lifetime. But here you are, standing in front of me as real as the sky is blue. I'm sorry I have to ask, but what is it that the Windbringer is supposed to do for you? I did not expect you to walk in here and have all the answers, child. The balance has both blessed you and cursed you, and it has sent you here to do what it wills. The Windbringer is said to be the first sign of the great wind that will take us away from here. For a long time, the elation have lost the strength they used to have. Our bones have become weak, and our wings fragile. Where we used to be able to soar for days on strong winds, we are now using our legs to walk rather than fly. Why this is, we do not know. Tanyen! 
You know of the reason for this? I'm just guessing, but it makes sense. Go on. The tales also say that the Windbringer will unite us with our past, and end the age-old strife. I know. You must make peace and be reunited with the Marum. You share a common ancestry. I have always thought we did. The tales were too similar, the signs clear. But my people, they... They will have a difficult time understanding why and how this can be. If you don't, both the Elation and the Marum will die out. When war broke out between your people, and you were forced to move up into the mountains, it compromised a precarious symbiosis. A substance called Tanyan was abundant, where the Marum and the Elation lived in close proximity. It brought fish, and heat, and light to both your people. But now, living up in the mountains, your way of life, your diet, your customs and habits, they've all changed. And that's probably the cause of your brittle bones and fragile wings. Then we must make peace with the Marum, and restore the balance between us, so as to strengthen us both and prepare us for the journey that will surely come soon. When our sitting is over, I will speak to my people, and I will elect one representative from the Elation to meet with the Marum in the place of your choosing to open a dialogue. I guess it's time for you to talk to your people, and for me to make arrangements with the Marum. Where do you wish for our meeting to take place, Windbringer? You want me to decide? Um, well, I know. Send your ambassador down to the ancient caves by the beach. Inside, there are remnants of an old Alation settlement and a Marum city. It's a good place for your two people to meet, don't you think? Yes. And could you ask if they would bring their half of the stone? The stone? You have the other half? We have held on to it for centuries, knowing that someday it would be of use to the Windbringer. It will, trust me. Then we must make haste and arrangements. It is an important day, so let us not waste light. Go and wait for my ambassador in the caves. Yeah, that's a longer set of dialogue than I normally play through. I normally summarize those, but I thought that was important enough to sit through. It's amazing. This place is so beautiful. And the scent of sea and rock and mist. This scent is a home. This was home a long, long time ago, according to the tales. We lived in peace with the wet tail, uh, with the mirror back then. Now you'll be able to live in peace again. And with the Tanyan bringing fish to your doorstep. You'll be able to eat well and restore strength to your bones. Soon you might even be able to soar on the winds for days like you used to do. I hope you are right, Windbringer. And I hope that the wet, the Mirum, will see the sense in it too. They are coming, are they not? They said they would. Hush, I hear something. We are here, Water Stiller, as was promised. Good. Now, as representatives of your respective peoples, you, the Queen of Amiram City, and you, Guard to the Elation Teller, must fulfill the prophecy and join the two parts of the One Stone. We hope that our peoples may be joined again, Elation, and that we may live in peace and prosper. As do we, Merum and we pledge to do all we can for this to happen. We got a Sistine Chapel roof moment going on here. So, yeah. The stone is now whole, Windbringer. And the elation and the mirror will once again be as one. You may take it with you. Thank you. The both of you. Come now, April. And we will take you to our sleeping guard. May his wisdom guide you and lead you down the right path. Okay, is that thing she's holding the rejoined stone, or is it just a weird Arcadian flashlight? And if she's underwater, would she really be sinking like that? Shouldn't she be swimming down? Okay, whatever. Um... Anyway, this is about the end of this. It's not quite the end of the, um, it's not 
quite the end of the chapter, but it's we've got some more conversations coming up, and it's going to be a good spot as I need to stop. So I think I'm going to give it a call, or call a stop to this right after this. And yeah, that looks like where a sleeping god would be, doesn't it? Um, okay, glad you're at the bottom, April. All right. But anyway, I'm going to stop here for now. And when we come back, we will have April carry on a conversation with the sleeping god and see what she can find out. In the meantime, this is Dennis. I am Tan Staffel, the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time.